This board here is from a Sinclair CX81, and this was not the Timex 1000 that a lot of people here in the States may have known back in the day. This actually came out of a Sinclair branded one, and I know this because I was actually the one that took this out of the casing. This is one that I found a long time ago at a thrift store when I was a lot younger, and I didn't know much about these things at the time, and I had no idea what it even was. It was just this funky looking computer-like device that, you know, had a membrane keyboard on the bottom and not much else. I mean, there was uh, this edge connector that kind of um, you could see from the back. And the whole reason why I even have this is because I thought it was, you know, a broken or dead or whatever when I first they hooked it up and I hooked it up to, you know, RF right here and I hooked that up to a TV. Like, I saw nothing. But I was also expecting to see something like on channel uh, 2, 3, or 4 and none of those channels were really showing me anything. I didn't find out until many years later that apparently it was supposed to be like channel 36 or something. So <laughs> I've had this board kicking around and luckily like uh, nothing really is missing other than some people may have noticed that it doesn't have the 5 volt regulator here on the bottom because at some point I must have pilfered it for something. So um, yeah, without the 5 volt regulator, you know, n none of this can power up if I were to put a power supply here, but it not completely necessary. I thought maybe we could see today if this thing actually works. There's really nothing missing from the board. Uh, like everything is still here. Like this is a CPU, which is like a Z Z80 or Z80 CPU. And then we got our, our ROM here. We got 8 kilobit uh, RAM. And then this is the, that Ferranti ULA. That's like basically a like a custom chip for all the logic and stuff for the inputs and outputs because uh, these connectors down here we have uh, the power input which is this one right here and then I don't remember which one of these is what but there was a tape in and a tape out so programs you know that you would want to save or load or whatever you could save them to a tape and that's yeah like a, like a basic audio tape something like this is where you would save your programs for those that weren't too familiar with this kind of stuff and I mean I wasn't either until just like recently when I started doing a little bit of research about this the membrane keyboard would plug into these two connectors right here. It, uh, ribbon would just kind of slide into those and you can see we have a bunch of diodes here and a bunch of resistors. These look a little flat so I might have to strain out some of that stuff and then these two they've gotten a little messed up there but they're not broken so everything looks like it should be fairly function or it should be fairly okay like as, as far as like function goes assuming nothing else you know like and that it wasn't dead to begin with and that's why I couldn't you know get anything so I'm going to somehow couple it over into the antenna input on this little TV here so we can test it and I'm not gonna put a 5 volt regulator here I do have one that I was intending to use but I don't really have any suitable power supplies right now that I could uh, plug into here which would have to have been like I don't know like 9 volts or something like that and so instead what I'm going to do is I got this USB cord that I sort of cannibalized and I'm just going to solder the positive and negative over to where the ground and the output of the 5 volt regulator would have been because uh, the way the 5 volt 7805 regulators are pinned out, that which is what was here, it used to be a 7805 so it would be like the input, ground and then the output but I can ignore the input since I'm not going to be using this so it's just going to be ground and then the output it's going to go 5 volts here to the to the USB connector and then I'm just going to use a regular USB like phone charger power supply to try to power this thing up the RF output here I'm just going to use a, another similarly cannibalized cable here and some alligator clips to try to couple the ground and then the output into the antenna input on this TV and hopefully if everything's okay here yeah we should see something and it should work and I guess uh, we'll see where we go from there because I'm like I said I have no idea if this thing even works or not maybe this can be used for some other future project hmm let's see and another thing uh, this switch is probably gonna have to come off for now because it's seen better days you can see that it's all kind of bent out of shape and it's not so straight anymore but that's easy so this here, we should be able to remove fairly easily because this is 
pretty much uh, lead-based solder. I'm just going to take turn heating all those up, and uh, there we go. So, I don't know, might fix that, or maybe not, depends. And here, looks like there's a broken pin or something. I'm probably just going to use some solder braid to clean all this up here. So let's do that. That way we eliminate having like any shorts or anything. And uh, hopefully you don't mess up anything else in the process. Okay, that should be good enough for all of our purposes here. And as we can see that this board is all pretty much like tin coated. There's no solder mask or anything anywhere. So solder just kind of freely runs up uh, where it needs to go. But I've cleaned up most of that there. So now... I am going to add a blob of solder here where the ground would have been on the 5 volt regulator and I'm going to add a blob here on the output. So that way I can just solder the ground from this USB cable here. And I can solder the positive here. Alright, after reviewing a very nice schematic that I found online, I'll actually link it down below in the comments. Uh, this switch that was supposed to be here is not actually a power switch, and I've forgotten about that. It's actually supposed to be a channel select switch, but I don't know which channel is what on this thing. And so I just took a piece of wire and I just jumped it across here, and we'll see if we get something. But we've got our 5 volt ground and positive hooked up there. So it should be set as far as that goes. So let's set this down here where we're not going to short the bottom here with anything. Let's move everything out of the way. Okay, now let's get the little TV here. And actually, I have to figure out how I'm going to do that first. Okay, since we're, we're going to need some sort of a ground reference here, I'm going to use this 1 8 inch to RCA splitter here. And then I'm just going to attach a alligator clip to the outside here. And then I'm going to put another alligator clip on the antenna input. This is all kind of crude, like a lot of things we do around here, but it should work. I've done this before with other things where I needed to, you know, hook up like some sort of a coax signal or something hooked up to the antenna and then a ground and it, it usually works. So I'm not doubting this too much here. So now I have my input here and my ground and we're going to stand this up. Let's tilt it back there so we can see if we're getting anything on the screen at all. Let's move this light a little bit out of the way so it's not... We don't have a glare, and uh, it's not going to work so well. Let's tilt it down some. There we go. Okay. So now, let's turn this back up. All right. Let's hook up. Maybe we should zoom this out a little bit. Okay. All right. Now let's hook up this. Uh, let's go with the red one here. We'll plug the red one in. On the opposite side here, we have our butchered connections here. So let's hook up the ground to the ground here, and then our video output is going to go to this yellow alligator clip. So there is that. Now let's get this out of the way here, where we're not going to be shorting anything else out. Just going to leave it right here in the back. Um, let's turn this on, and it's just going to be sitting there like scanning through the channels. Let's turn off the brightness. As you can see, there's a green line going through there. So right now it's trying to scan on the UHF band, which I think it's what it should be on because apparently it's supposed to be like 36 or something. So we'll find out. So now let us turn on the ZX81. I'm plugging in the USB now and we'll see if the TV locks onto something. All right, let's see. Okay, it's plugged in. And TV still scanning. Let's see if it locks onto something around here somewhere. Please, oh, it just passed it. Well, no, I'm not turning it volume. Let's turn up brightness here. Let's put it on VHF and see if that does anything. Uh, is anything getting warm here? The ULA is getting warm, and I have heard that these do run quite hot. So, looks like it's doing something, but not really seeing anything so well, that's a bummer hmm I was just about getting ready to give up on this 
when I thought, eh, I'll pull out the scope and see if, you know, there's something I can see there that, you know, might be still functioning. So I checked the clocks on the, going into the ULA, and what there is, is there's a 6.5 megahertz, uh, what looks like a ceramic uh, resonator going to it, and if we touch one of the pins of the resonator, we get that, and if we turn on the tracking here, if we see that it is, the peaks are pretty much like spot on 6.5 megahertz when I touch pin 35 of the ULA which is uh, the oscillator pin input it's uh, slightly off it's different and I think that's because it looks like they're using a looks like they're using a a capacitor resistor a time constant there so it drops it down a little bit here, uh, let's see, I guess that's about close. Looks like about 4. 4. 4.6, 4. 4.7 or so megahertz going into the ULA. Uh, I don't know what the specs are actually supposed to be, but it looks like that's about what's going in there. But then if I touch pin 6 of the Z80 CPU, which is the input, we get that. And here we're seeing about, if we go to that peak and then we go to the other peak here, about 3.2 megahertz. So it looks like it's doing something. And then if I touch the probe to the this input here on the on the modulator box, uh, we can see that there's something there, but I have to turn it down. And if we turn it down enough, and I have the uh, the voltage here set to a one volt per division, as we can see there, we see that there is something. So that does look like a video signal of sorts. All right, so here if we set this to uh, one volt per division, and we have the we have this on DC coupling, and we put it here, we see that we are getting about one volt there. So that does look like a decent video signal. So it looks like it's doing something. So I guess the best thing to do would be to try to tap into the video signal at the before the modulator instead, because it uh, looks like I'm not gonna get anything out of it. And maybe that was the problem with this thing, that there just wasn't any video output on the modulator. I'm not sure. But I think, I don't know if I'd be able to connect directly to that. I think I have to basically make another little circuit. Alright, slight ch change of plans here. Since that video signal looks like it's pretty decent enough to go into like something with composite, I'm just going to try hooking it up straight into that TV there, into its composite video input here and I don't remember when using an adapter like this which one's uh, the video and which one's the audio so I just have them both hooked up, hooked up there and if one doesn't work over here then I'm going to switch this yellow one to the other one so right now I have it on the red we'll see if that does anything the ground is still ground so that doesn't change and as soon as we plug into the back here it this automatically switches over to the composite input so let's apply power to the board and let's hook up our alligator clip here to the video input, and that's audio. Okay, so <laughs> I could tell because of that humming sound. So we're going to hook the yellow one up here to the white one, and now we're going to hook this up to here. And, whoa, we're just getting a uh, black screen. Okay. Does that mean anything? Hey, hey, there's actually a K down here. It's, it's, it's working. There it is. So that K means that the... <laughs> Who knows how many years this thing's been sitting around and it finally does something. So yeah, whenever the these uh, CX, the ZX81s uh, were powered up, they would display a K there. So let me unplug power here and we'll see what it does there. So it should just come right up. And <laughs> awesome. Sweet. And I thought this thing was dead. All right, so that was uh, awesome and exciting and everything. But then the question is, what do we do with this thing? I don't have the keyboard because I don't have the rest of the casing, which the keyboard is attached to. I went to these. There's no way to attach another external keyboard because it's like there's no keyboard connectors or anything on this thing. Uh, we could try loading a program from like a tape or something on those uh, the audio connectors over here, but that's not going to do us any good without a keyboard because we have to use a keyboard to to even load anything so for now i think i'm happy with this thing just working 
So I'm going to have to figure out some way to come up with some sort of keyboard to be able to enter in commands and everything. But just as a test, let's see if we can get stuff to show up on screen here. I'm going to plug this back in. And there is the K. And this thing is looking extremely dim. So I am going to just uh, take a little jumper here. And I'm going to try, you know, like different combinations of of these two connectors here because uh, one's basically for the like the horizontal row of wires going like this and then the other set is for like the the vertical rows and you know depending on like which set of of wires that uh, makes contact with each other or like shorts out that's going to be like the letter or whatever that gets uh, typed on screen so I'm just going to take this and take turns like jumping in different combinations of these and we'll see what shows up on screen so I'm just going to zoom this all the way in. All right, so there we can see our K. And while we can see the K, we can also tell that it looks extremely washed out. And what I've read is that this uh, version of the ULA, which is a 2C184E, doesn't have a back porch. And actually, we saw that on the video signal. That it's basically, you know, it, it goes from like zero all the way up to like one volt or whatever. And there's supposed to be like a little step there for a proper back porch for a video signal to make a the the I guess like the black I'm not it's like an expert on video signals either but I understand a little bit of it that's supposed to have a back porch to, to give it like a proper a black level and which uh, this uh, particular ULA is not doing so that's why it looks pretty washed out but at least we'll be able to see if we're getting something there so I'm gonna start poking here I'm just going to attach this test lead to one of the pins on the on the right hand connector and then I'm going to just kind of start poking here at the left one We'll see if anything starts showing up on a screen, and it does. It says uh, IF right now and L. And I'm gonna poke another one here. Let's see if something else shows up. Mm, no, we got an I. And I'm just kind of like just moving it around here, and then I can see that there's different things popping up on when I do that. So if I do another row here, I can see there's uh, more stuff showing up. So it looks like. Things are sort of working at least. Uh, good enough to uh, test for our purposes here and I see that things aren't showing up very well but at least you can see that there is something there. So I'm kind of happy and this ULA chip it is really really hot. I could tell like this is the kind of thing that <laughs> you probably want to put a heat sink on. I think some people do. I think I like came across something where people said they would put like a little bit of a like a small heatsink or something on this because it does get pretty warm and the CPU is sort of warm. This ROM is actually quite warm as well. The RAM I don't expect too much heat from and no, that's it's not very hot. So cool. I I think maybe we could do something with this in the future. Uh, I just wanted to see if the thing actually even worked and as we can see it is. So once again, thanks guys for watching. Remember, if you like this kind of stuff, to subscribe because I've got a bunch of other projects and stuff that I, I've been wanting to do. It's just uh, kind of finding the time and stuff to do stuff around here kind of sucks. But I'm hoping to get to things, and I, I'm hoping that someday I can you know do like maybe uh, more than one video a week. I actually missed last week, but I'm trying to stick with it. So once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys around the bench.